so that we can actually tackle them logically, so we can actually think about them. Because they're difficult to think about all these problems and manage them in one go. In my last video, I introduced test-driven development in an iOS app by testing a pure stateless function, which is a function that takes an input and returns an output, and a given input will always produce the same output. So it's a fairly easy thing to test. In this video, I wanna build on top of that by testing a stateful object in Swift. So this would be an object that uh, maintains some sort of state and calling methods on this object might alter the state in some way and we'll need to write tests to make sure that the state changes always work the way we want them to. For these testing videos, I'm building a budgeting app and here's a final version of the app where I can put in a budget, let's say $100 for the week, and down here it will calculate this is how much I have left for the week, this is how much I have left to spend today, and when I spend a certain amount, it will get deducted from the weekly balance and the daily balance. In this video, I want to build and test the object that is gonna manage the budget and the transactions that happen within that budget to calculate these different values for the week and the day. To implement this, I'm gonna create a budget class that gets constructed with the total weekly balance, then divides that by seven to figure out the daily balances, and then it will contain methods that we can call to create transactions to spend money, and then it will recalculate the remaining today and the remaining for the week, so that later on, the view controller can take those values and display them in labels like this. So a single class is gonna be responsible for all of that logic. So since I'm using test-driven development here, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new test for my class. So I haven't created the budget class yet, but I'm gonna create a unit test case class uh, and I'm gonna call this budget tests. And this is where I write all the tests for the budget class. So uh, I generally delete all of the boilerplate functions to begin with. Uh, I, I find I don't need them immediately and when I do need them, I can just bring them in. So I'm gonna start in the test file by planning out what it is that I'm gonna test. And I'm gonna do that by writing some empty functions just so I can get a sense of what I'm going for here. So I've added four functions here and there's no actual testing or assertions going on, but this is just a nice way of planning out what it is that I'm gonna do in the app. So I wanna be able to test that when I create a budget, it contains that weekly amount. Uh, I wanna test that it contains the daily amount that's remaining and that it's calculated correctly. And then when I start adding transactions, so that's any time I spend some money, I wanna make sure that it correctly deducts from the total weekly remaining and then from the total daily remaining. So these are the four things that I'm gonna test right now. Uh, I could test more things or less things, but I just like to plan it out before I start writing tests, just kind of get a sense of where I'm going first. So I'm gonna start with the first function and the first thing I need to do is create a new budget object using that budget class. And I wanna be able to construct a new budget with the uh, total amount for the week. So I'm just gonna construct this with a total. And let's just say that I wanna create that with, with uh, one, maybe even zero. I'm gonna create a budget with a, a total balance of zero for the week. And immediately this fails because there is no budget class. So what I need to do is actually create that class to make my test actually compile. Uh, so I'm just gonna create a new budget file and I'll just say class budget uh, and it'll have to have an initializer that takes in a total and that's gonna be a, a decimal number because we're gonna be working with monetary values, we wanna use the decimal type. Uh, then I actually have to at testable import my uh, weekly budget. So now this builds and I can pass in the budget and I just ran the tests and these are all passing because it's not asserting anything. So the next thing I wanna do is uh, I wanna assert that the budget's weekly remaining is set to this total. When I initially set up a budget, the remaining should be the amount that I passed into that budget. So I'm gonna use uh, an XCT assert equal. Why am I not getting any autocomplete here? There we go. Uh, and then I'm gonna pass in, uh, I want budget dot, uh, and I'm gonna call this weekly remaining. And then the second parameter is just gonna be zero. So this property should be set to zero. And this fails because there isn't actually a weekly remaining property uh, on the budget class. 
So I can fix this, I'll just say uh, let weekly remaining, uh, I want this to be a decimal type, and I'm just going to set this to zero because that's the easiest way of constructing this right now. So then back in my tests, if I run this, and it's probably going to pass, yeah, okay, because the weekly remaining amount is zero, it's going to be zero dollars. So uh, that's great, now let's try this again with another number, so I'm going to turn this into a variable, and then what I'll do is I'll create a new budget. Uh, I'm gonna set the total to one, and then I'm gonna check that the weekly remaining is now one. So if I run this, this should fail now because it said zero, there we go. Uh, so back in the budget class, I have to make this pass, and this is really easy. I'm just gonna set the weekly remaining to be the total amount. Uh, and now if I go back and run the tests, and oh, I'll have to get rid of the default value there. Okay, so that's gonna be that. Uh, and if I go back and run the tests, this should now pass. There we go, great. Uh, and just to make sure it's working, I'm gonna pass in just another value. Let's see, one, two, three, and I'm pretty sure this will just pass. There we go. And that's enough tests, that's enough assertions for me to be confident that if I create a budget with some sort of total amount, that the weekly remaining is gonna be set to that amount. And then I'm actually just gonna refactor this a little bit because it's kind of getting long here. Uh, what I can do instead is I'm going to create an array of amounts. So this decimal type, and I can set this to be 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and then I'm just going to loop over the amounts here and use that to construct the budget. Let's see that budget, pass in the amount here and then assert that that is the amount that can be accessed from that weekly remaining uh, property. So then I can delete these, and that just makes the code a little bit smaller, just refactors the tests a little bit, and if I run this test now, these should all still be passing, and I can just pass in new values here as much as I want. Uh, so it's just good to refactor the test to make them a little bit cleaner as well. Okay, so on to the next test. This is gonna be really similar to the first set of tests but uh, instead of checking that the weekly remaining is set to that total value, what I want is for the daily remaining to be uh, that value divided by seven. So if I pass in, uh, let's say $70 into my budget, by default immediately, I'm gonna allocate $10 to each day of the week. Uh, so if I pass in zero to the budget, my uh, daily remaining should be zero because zero divided by seven is still zero. So uh, daily remaining remain ing should be zero and then this won't even run the test because there is no daily remaining amount so again I'll just come into the budget make this uh, make this pass as quickly as possible uh, which means daily remaining equals zero there we go uh, and then run this again and it should pass daily remain oh i misspelled it here remaining there we go and that passes and then i'm actually just going to use the same technique that i used up here so i'm going to copy and paste that in here instead of checking the weekly remaining i'm going to check the daily remaining and then i'm going to take the amount and divide it by seven and that's what i'm going to be testing i want to make sure that these values and i'll just start with a, a simple one first uh, that these values divided by seven is what the initial daily remaining amount is. And that doesn't pass because zero is not equal to this. So this is one divided by seven. Well, at least uh, for as many digits as this system can handle anyway. Um, so right now it's set to zero and that's not equal to this. This is actually kind of hard to read in the error messages though. So what I'm gonna do to make these errors easier to read is to only use things that are divisible by seven. So I'm gonna go zero, seven, maybe I'll throw in 70 or some other value like that. So now when I read the error message, it's saying, okay, that failed because zero is not equal to one. Um, I could even pass in a custom message here. I could say uh, the daily remaining is not the uh, amount divided by seven. And then that should just read a little bit easier, custom error message there. So when this fails now, the message will say, um, daily remaining is not seven divided by seven, right? It's, it's zero is not equal to one. So this is a little bit easier to read, so I'm just gonna use those values for that. Uh, and this isn't working, this isn't passing because it's just being set to zero. So instead, uh, a pretty easy fix again, I'm just gonna set the daily remaining to be the total 
divided by 7. And now if I run this test, this should pass, and then I'll pass in a few more values here. Yep, uh, so 7 works, go 14, let's maybe do 70, and I'm pretty sure these will all pass. Yep, there we go. So now to test the transaction. So this is the amount that's going to get deducted from the actual budget when we spend money. Uh, so if I have a budget of, let's say, 10 for the week and I spend 2, I now have 8 remaining for the week. So we're just going to test those transactions. So again, I'll start by creating the budget. And I'm going to give this a total of, uh, say, 10. And then I'm going to, on the budget class, I want to be able to call a method called add transaction. And I want to be able to pass in to this method the amount of the transaction. So in this case, I'm just going to spend zero dollars and the timestamp because I want my application to be able to say when the thing was uh, was spent. Maybe it's right now, but maybe it was a different day. So this is how I want to be able to use the budget object. This is how I want to be able to add a transaction to the budget object. And this is worth reflecting on for a moment, how I'm deciding what I want my method to look like before the method even exists. When we're using test-driven development, we get to make these decisions from the perspective of the code that's actually interacting with the interface of this class rather than making the decisions from the class itself. If we weren't using TDD, we would have to make these decisions from the perspective of the budget object, and that can get kind of messy because it's hard to decouple the inner workings of the object from the interface. And my, my other code here, my test code or my actual app code, doesn't need to know about the implementation details of the budget object, it only really cares about the interface and, and if I call this method, does it do the correct thing? I don't care how it does it, just is it doing the right thing? So by writing the test first, you're really emphasizing how you expect this object to work, but without actually making any decisions about the implementation of how it works, just how you use it from the perspective of the interface. Just when we're designing the interface of our object, it just helps to be thinking this way about how it's actually going to be called. And like I said, TDD forces us into thinking this way, which I've found to be really helpful in writing cleaner code that requires less refactoring. So this test is failing because this add transaction method doesn't exist. So the next thing to do is actually implement this method. So it's add transaction. It's going to accept uh, an amount. That's a decimal and a timestamp, which is a date. And now this test should pass, or at least should run. Um, okay, and I'm not asserting anything yet. So what I want to assert now is that if I add a transaction, that that amount gets deducted from the total. So I'm basically asserting that the budget's uh, weekly remaining should now be well, still 10 because I've deducted $0, but that's a test worth running. So this will probably pass, it does. Uh, so then, let's copy and paste this. If I create a transaction with the amount one, uh, this should go down by one, so it should now be nine. So if I run this test, this should now fail because the, the logic hasn't been implemented yet. There we go. Uh, so now we have to go and implement that logic, that behavior to make this pass. And it's really interesting to note that these tests are testing some of the fundamental behavior that isn't going to change when I add new requirements, new behavior to the object. So no matter what I do to make this test pass, these tests will always have to pass as well. And I'll have to be able to run my test suite and see that these are passing all together. So I have to now make this work without breaking any of my previous tests. And that's always going to be the case. And it's really handy to have these to make sure, OK, these features are still working. And this new feature is working, I didn't break anything. It's that peace of mind that I haven't broken something by adding a new feature. Uh, so back in the budget object, I need to be able to deduct this amount from the weekly remaining. Uh, so this is pretty easy. Let's just remove the amount from the weekly remaining. So I'll have to uh, set it equal to uh, or minus equal to the amount. And I'll turn that into a variable. Uh, and then I'll rerun my tests and they are now all passing. Uh, so yeah, all those tests are passing right there. Uh, so that's great, and I've just realized that I made a spelling mistake, which, right there. So I'm gonna refactor this quickly. Re, remaining, there we go. 
rerun my tests to make sure everything builds and still passing. There we go. Okay, test succeeding. Uh, so let's now add one more test here. Um, super easy. Let's throw in two, and this should now be seven. And I'll run this, and I'm pretty sure this will just pass. Yep. Notice that I'm passing in a timestamp here because I know in the future that I'm gonna to wanna to use this so that I can spend money on different days and show the remaining budget for different days accurately. And on the budget side, eventually I'll have to use this timestamp to make future test pass that I haven't written yet. But right now, just to make these current test pass, I don't need to use that timestamp. It just doesn't matter right now. So I'm gonna ignore that for now just to get these tests to pass. This parameter will actually have to be used to make the future test pass. So don't worry about going for gold in the beginning. Don't write more code than you need to. Just write the code that makes the test pass. And in the future, when you uh, add new features, if the tests here are still passing, then you haven't broken the old features and you just focus on the current thing at a time. This is a really key part of test-driven development as well. You get to just kind of focus on the little incremental steps within building a feature rather than having to build the entire feature in one go, which is really difficult even for the best programmers. We need to break things down so that we can actually tackle them logically, so we can actually think about them, because they're difficult to think about all these problems and manage them in one go. So now for the final one, the deducts from the daily remaining test. So for this, I'm gonna copy and paste the first test from up here because it's gonna be really similar, uh, except it's gonna be for the daily remaining rather than the weekly remaining. And just to make this easier to reason about, again, because it's gonna be divided by seven, I'm just gonna use a multiple of seven, 70 in this case, nice and round. And if I create a transaction for zero dollars, then the daily remaining amount is 10, so that's right. And then I'll just have to change this to daily remaining. So if I start with 70, that's gonna give me a daily budget of $10. Uh, and if I deduct zero from that, it should still be 10, perfect. Uh, and now let's just do what we did before. So if I deduct, $1 from today, then I should have $9 left from today. So if I run this, this is gonna fail. So back over to my budget object, uh, and I'll just set the daily remaining to be minus equal the amount. And now if I run my test, this should run, this should work. Oh, no, it's failing to build. Ah, because uh, this is a constant, I set it to be a variable. So now I'll rerun this. Okay, and these are all passing, and yeah, I'll just add another test, uh, same one as before. So if I now deduct two from that, that should be seven. And if I run this again, this should be passing. And these are enough tests to make me think, okay, this is actually working the way I expect it to. And while all my tests are passing, I can refactor my code to make it a little bit cleaner if I want. So this code isn't out of hand, it's pretty minimal. But there is one thing that I don't like about it, it's that these uh, variables right here can be modified from outside code. So some other object can come along and, and alter the weekly or daily remaining balances without going through the transaction method, which is the proper way of doing it. So I can just refactor this, uh, and I'm not gonna write any tests for this because this is an implementation detail, not uh, an interface thing. So what I'm gonna do is create uh, private variables for these, and I'll just do that underscore thing. Uh, private var, and then I'm gonna change these to be computed. So this will return that weekly remaining amount, and this will return the daily remaining. And now these can't be modified externally, but internally, if I just add underscores here, everything should work the same. So now I can rerun my tests. And if everything passes, I haven't broken anything. And this is one of the best things about having tests. I can refactor my code, I can change things. And if anything has been broken, if I've tweaked something that breaks something, these tests are gonna tell me if I've done that. And that's really, really important. And this definitely isn't gonna be the final implementation of my budget class. There's gonna to be tons of things that need to change about this to actually make it work in the future. I'll have to keep track of each transaction and the timestamp and make sure they get deducted correctly from the uh, total budget and from each day within the budget. Uh, but these tests will make sure that these features still work even if this implementation completely changes, and that's so important. That's it for this video, and in my next video, I'm gonna show you how to test view controllers by implementing all the labels and text fields for this part of the application.